Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to share with you how I go about creating these sweeping curved backdrops here on the Piedmont Southern because these are a seamless backdrop that go around the curve. You can see the curvature up there at the ceiling level and they flow completely around the entire layout. And what I'm going to do with that is here on the modules that we've been working on for a number of months, I have the backdrops ready to be installed. But at each end, I want to bring the uh, hardboard backdrop around at a 90 degree angle to close off each end and basically separate it from the surrounding mess uh, clutter here in the layout. So let's go ahead and get started with that project. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. Now, here on the Piedmont Southern, I use hardboard for my backdrop. So it's about eighth inch thick. Um, masonite is the common name for it. Tempered hardboard. And what I've done is I've applied it directly to the walls. And then at each seam, I have basically used a good old fashioned uh, drywall uh, spackling uh, joint compound techniques to give me a perfectly seamless backdrop all the way around. And in the, in the corners, all I've done is just allowed it to take a natural curve through that, uh, through that corner area. And that allows it to not only uh, take the natural curve, but once you put a curve into a masonite, it becomes self-supporting. So it becomes fairly rigid back in there. So I don't have to worry about any other kind of supports. So it's basically just uh, attached to the wall with uh, drywall screws and then I spackle over it using drywall compound, sand it down and paint it and follow through all the way around the entire layout. And what I'm going to do on the, uh, on the modules is a little bit similar, although there's one special thing I do need to show you. So let's focus in on the modules where we're going to do that work. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. You'll see that here at the end of the layout, and I've done the same thing on the back sides, I've installed a simple one by two, just screwing it directly to the end boards and to the back boards here on the, uh, on the layout itself. And those are going to be the vertical supports. Uh, you can see right here, I've got one installed temporarily with a clamp uh, just to hold the backboard in place while I'm doing the final measurements and getting everything set up. So what I want to do now though is, I want to take this, right here in this corner, I want to take this angle, this 90 degree angle, at a uh, fairly, fairly sharp curve. And in order to do that, it requires a special technique. Now this is a piece of the same masonite hardboard, tempered hardboard material. And you can see, uh, it's been in this shape for uh, two or three years now, when, when I first tested this method out for uh, an installation elsewhere on the Piedmont Southern. And it, once you get this bent into shape and it has dried, it's, it's going to stay this way until you uh, uh, bend it to a different shape. And that's what's important because it's going to be firm and rigid in this area. In addition, I'll have this support here holding it in place so that it's not going to be moving around. Now another thing I did I cut a small lip here into the uh, foam that is the base of the scenery. So we have basically a one half inch deep recess where the hardboard is going to be sitting. So that's going to keep it firmly rigid and held between the piece of uh, one by two and the foam itself. So that's going to help keep it in place as well. Now, the method that I use is something that was taught to me by my friend Dale Martell, and I saw it on his layout and asked him how he did it. And what it basically involves is saturating the area that you want to curve with good old Windex. And it has to be the original formula with ammonia D. 
and the ammonia is the important part apparently. I have not tried it any other way because Dale told me, you know, it has to be Windexed with ammonia D. So I suppose that it has something to do with the ammonia and the way that uh, this masonite or hardboard is made because it's made by just basically compressing these fibers together. It doesn't, to my knowledge and from what I've read, have any resins or other materials like that, uh, like are used in uh, MDF and some other types of, of manufactured uh, materials like this. So uh, for some reason then when you saturate this with ammonia D Windex, it becomes very, very flimsy and you can just bend it right around to a very sharp curve as you can see here. So that is the type of angle that I want to create here on the backdrop. What I did in preparation is took a piece of uh, a 4 by 8 foot sheet of cardboard and I cut it to 15 inches wide. So it's going to stand 15 inches tall. The reason for that is the uh, eventually I'm going to be installing a, um, a, a printed backdrop that uh, is adhesive backed that will go here on the uh, on the modules, and um, it's exactly 15 inches tall. So I wanted to have about a half an inch uh, of cutoff here, so that once I install it, I don't have to be perfect. I, I'm not going to have to have a perfect edge here up at the sky level, and that way I can come through with an exacto knife and trip trim the final. Uh, uh, scene, the printed backdrop, so that it's even here with the with the edge of the backdrop. Now in order to make sure that it was a, a good straight angle, I used the um, I used the cut edges or the manufactured edge of the uh, of the hardboard for these two pieces uh, that go on to the backdrop. And each one of these is um, let's see 70 and one quarter inches long. And that's how long it is in order to match this uh, the dimensions of the module. So once this is once I get this curved and fitted and ready to be installed, I'll go ahead and paint the uh, sky blue um, because the manufacturer of the um, of the printed backdrop says that um, the, the adhesive they use doesn't stick well to MD, uh, MDF and similar materials. So I'm going to make the assumption that I do need to apply a layer of paint first and that's going to be there as my backdrop until the other part of this comes in because all I've been able to, to do is get part two of this or part B. Part A, it's been on back order for months. Um, I, got a, I got one recently from them, they sent it to me. It was the same one as this. They had just mislabeled it. So I'm stuck waiting for the uh, for the printed backdrop, the second portion of the pen printed backdrop to arrive before I can actually finish this job. But I wanted to go ahead and get it this far at least because it's been sitting here for you know several months now waiting for a backdrop uh, before I can do a lot more of the scenery. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move forward with that and hope that the company that I ordered the uh, the printed backdrop from will be able to get me a replacement uh, of the second portion soon. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take this out into the driveway and I'm going to saturate the back side. I'm going to saturate the rough side of the masonite because I think the front side is going to shed uh, the, the uh, Windex. So I'm just going to saturate it uh, through this area of the curve here. And then I'll bring it back in and we'll go ahead and install it here on the layout, get it back up just like this, and then I'll do the curve. And you'll get to see that happen as, it, as, uh, as I create the curve. So let's go ahead and uh, let me get it apart and take it out into the driveway. Okay, I've got it fully saturated and it's back up in place up here. I need to put in one more of my uh, clamps to hold that in in its location. And now I'm just going to start bending it around here to get it to take the shape of the curve. I'm doing this slowly because I don't want to crack it. I 
think that popping sound you hear is the compression of the, the foam. Okay, let me bring it on around. And there we've got it around most of the curve. Now I need to reinstall my vertical support, and that's really going to be the part that holds it in place. Okay, let me put up a, uh, a temporary clamp here. I have these uh, galvanized metal plates, and I'm just going to use that here for a real quick and dirty clamp to hold that roughly where I want it while I'm finishing this curvature. Okay, we pretty much have it at the right angle. So now I'm going to take and reattach him to the baseboard here, to the side. Let me get the uh, screw so I can see the tip. There. Now, we'll get that into place. Let me see if I can get that started. Yep. I'm going to get this other one into its hole. Okay, so that's starting to work it into place. Bring this one back over here into the recess and we're getting very close to having it done here. Okay, let me get these Get that back down into position. We have it there. And here. What I'm going to do is put another one of these metal clamps here. Until I can get something. T okay, one more time. Let me release the pressure. So I now have it in here. Uh, I took a piece of plywood to add as an additional spacer to give it more force that direction. And hopefully it's going to dry in a reasonable amount of time. We'll see how long it takes. There, I want it right above that track level. And, uh, I think that's going to do the job there. So as, uh, let me zoom in a little bit and show you something that I did. Okay, right here I cut an opening in the uh, end of the, or in the, the masonite or the hardboard, so that it would fit over the track where it comes out here at the end of the uh, module. This will be where it goes out to our staging yard or our fiddle yard. So that allowed me to slip it over here. I've done the same thing at the far end as well. As you can see, it, it uh, fits right up here, just behind the fascia on the layout. So we've got a really good fit, I think. Um, don't know how this is going to, how long it's going to take to dry. I'm hoping that this will dry uh, in time for me to include it in the uh, video. If not, I'll do an uh, additional section later, uh, part two of this video, 
that will look at the final uh, curvature. Also, how I'm going to attach it to these verticals on the back here on this end and on the back because I'm going to uh, I'm not going to run screws through the front. I want this to be something that can be removed because for um, for for people that um, are never going to move their layout, this would be fine. You could attach it, you know, directly to the um, to the uprights and not have to worry about it. But I know there are a lot of you guys out there who may you know have one of these for your apartment or uh, maybe moving uh, moving the layout around, going to shows and those kind of things. So you're going to want to be able to take the backdrop off and reinstall it uh, once you get to the show. Personally, what I think I would do is if I were you guys, I would build a box to go around the whole thing, uh, as many professional builders uh, do. So that's it for today. Um, this is going to sit here and dry probably for two or three days. Um, let's see, I'm filming this on a Tuesday. So hopefully by Thursday, I'll be able to take this apart, get it all set up and show you the final uh, uh, piece where it is at attached here at the back and is recessed and is taking the curve well. Because right now it looks pretty good, but we'll see. Let's take a look at the front here. Okay, so here you can see the uh, the front of the lay uh, front of the uh, backboard, uh, and we've got a nice curve coming around through here. So the uh, I think it's going to look pretty good once we get the uh, photo scene um, glued on here and laid out good and flat. Uh, you can see here we've got our cutout where the uh, uh, trains will go to and from the uh, fiddle yard or staging yard, and to disguise that, I'm just going to put. Uh, a big tree here, a tree here, a tree here, and uh, a tree here, so that trains will basically disappear into a grove of trees and reappear from a grove of trees, as opposed to having a tunnel portal here, which just won't fit in with the uh, scenery background that I've purchased. Um, and at the other end, I have a bridge uh, that will be located there. I could put another bridge here, but I just think that would be overkill. I'd rather try using the, uh, the, the uh, foliage from three trees or four trees or however many it takes to basically disguise the fact that there is a, a hole in the wall back here that the trains are disappearing into and appearing out of. I'm thinking this is going to be drying because as you can see it's drying here uh, as I'm talking and uh, I think it's going to be done by tomorrow so I should be able to get a video shot late tomorrow or Thursday morning uh, in time to upload this for the video on Friday morning. It's been uh, 24 hours and the Windex has all evaporated. So this is firmed up quite nicely here. It's dry, there's no cracks, splits, or anything anywhere. So I'm very happy with the way it all turned out. What I want to show you here is, um, I'll go ahead and remove this metal plate. And as you can see, it's staying pretty much in place. Uh, let me take uh, take off this vertical support. So it's totally freestanding. I can pull it out and it's going to stay right there. It's not popping out too far, no more than you would expect. So it's taken the curve quite nicely and it is set in this new position. And that's the important part because it's going to stay there until, like I said, you retreat it and bend it into a new position. So I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. Uh, I got everything I wanted out of this deal. So uh, let me go ahead and put my main support back. I'm going to keep this here in the long run because it does you know, keep it from popping out um, of its uh, location there. So I'm going to put this back in right now. Okay. Here. Get the other screw in. And there we are. So that's going to hold it in place. I, I really don't need anything uh, to support this side, but I think I'm going to put a support here anyway, just to keep it from flopping around. Uh, I think it's going to be better to stabilize it in the long run. And I still haven't made up my mind about cutting a, a curved radius here. I think it will make it look a little bit better, but um, 
I'll make that decision before I paint the other side of the backdrop. So you can see it's going to, it's going to work out real well for the purposes that I had. So here on the front of the layout, we've got the nice curve that I showed you before. Uh, again, there are no cracks, uh, stress marks, or anything. It's just as smooth as a, a baby's bottom. So I think that the, uh, I think that the printed backdrop is going to go on here without any issues. And um, as I said before, there will be a tree here, a tree here, a tree here, and this guy is going to be there, and there will be the gasworks uh, structure here. So you're not going to see the fact that trains are disappearing through this hole in the uh, in the backdrop. So that'll take care of, of that aspect of it as well, I hope. And um, now I can go ahead and start working on more of the scenery to go around this, this area here. But first, I've got to paint it. So, and, and then I think I might go ahead and install the uh, first part of the uh, printed backdrop that I already have. Uh, because I'm going to go on faith that those guys at ID Back Scenes can uh, actually get me the part A uh, that I need to go down at that end of the layout. So the part that I do have at least goes here. So that should be another video coming up sometime soon too. Um, one thing I will be doing uh, a video on is how I'm going to attach the backdrop here to these vertical uprights. Because I think that's important to do that because, you know, for the most part this is not going to move around. Uh, but there are a couple of spots where I am more concerned about that. And I've got a way that I, I think is going to work very well to hold that in place uh, and give it a lot more rigidity. So that's a wrap for today's video. Um, have a great weekend and uh, join me here next week for uh, another video, a couple of videos from the DCC Guide. I'll be doing one on Monday on uh, something special. I'm not going to tell you what it is just in case something falls through and I can't do it. But at least by Friday, uh, we will have uh, a little bit more to do here with uh, probably uh, attaching the uh, rear supports uh, to the backdrop itself. So join me then for another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.